Hello, hello, hello. Good morning to you all and thank God for this day. And I always say this is the day that the Lord has made. We'll rejoice and be glad in it. Bless the name of the Lord. We thank God for his goodness this morning to share God's word on the screen with you all, wherever you are in Ghana, Africa and around the world. And I'm here and I want you to I want you to write to me or comment about what we are doing in the name of the Lord for you. I want to know how blessed you are, how uh, refresh you get from the word of the Lord as we share with you and we've been coming your way all this while and I know that God is doing something in your lives in the name of Jesus Christ so I want to hear from you I want those in the ministry and out of the ministry wherever you have linked with us I want you to give a very good comments about what God is doing in your life I want to hear from you to share your testimonies to sow your seed to support this great cause worthy cause and i believe god will never reject you he will meet you and glorify you and honor you and bless you like never before father we thank and bless you that the entrance of your word give, gives light and light to the same and i pray may your word bring illumination elucidate trauma light transformation in in their lives as they hear the word of god this morning i pray holy spirit May this word, Lord my God, I can break every yoke and break any demonic activity, discomfort and worry and anxiety wherever they are around the world, O oh Lord. Overcome menopause, overcome depression, and subjection, and man of solo, acquainted with grief, Lord. Let it go in the name of Jesus. Bless somebody right now, I pray, God. And I know, Lord, you give them a turning point, a point that, Lord, they have never attained before ever in their lives, I pray. I give you praise and glory in Jesus' mighty name. I pray, may this word, meet their heart desire and refresh them amen so we are here to share god's word with you about fasting fasting the true treasure fasting the true treasure so fasting is so important and we have to remember to fast and whether you like it or not god has added this to our lives as soon as one becomes born again god automatically adds this to one's life to be fasting periodically so whether you like it or not, a time is coming, there will be a burden on you and you will be compared to fast. So whether you like it or not, you've been eating, you've been eating and you haven't fasted before or you don't normally fast. God will put burden on, upon you to fast because some of the prayer we pray, it doesn't, some of the things, the challenges we face, it doesn't demand prayer, it demands fasting. You need to go extra mile. Jesus tried to told his disciples after they reported to him that why that when he prays, it works. But when the disciples pray, they don't see any miracle. He said, this thing will never go until fasting and prayer. So first is the prayer. And next time you pray, nothing happened. You need to add fasting to it. So if you don't add fasting to your life, you can't be fasting every day, but periodically, mm -hmm, God will urge you the Spirit of God in you can urge you even to fast. And it's so crucial, so important, noble for you to do that one. Hallelujah. So fasting is what is a true treasure. Fasting, true treasure. You remember people who go to a village, forests, and they will dig the ground and say they are digging to get gold or diamond or something. They will use all their strength to work galamseas, who work spoil the water bodies because of particles of gold that have been in the ground. They can work eight hours, 12 hours, many hours to get something small, handful of gold. And they've destroyed the water bodies, trees, the forests, the whatever that is there because of the gold they have seen. So fasting is like gold or diamond. It's like something precious like amber or jewel. So if you don't fast, the amber will not come, the jewel will not come, the gold will not come, the diamond will not come. Look at the Galamseas, how they work. Look at the miners in Ghana or in South Africa and other countries. They will mine and mine, they'll go down underground because of gold. So if we're looking for precious things, you can't get them on the, the surface of the earth. You, you have to dig deeper and keep digging deeper, keep digging deeper. And sometimes you need to uh, uh, put your life down, like you're fresh down and fast. You need to bring the body under control. You need to deny. So we are talking about fasting, true treasure. 
So I have defined it to you. Fasting means true treasure. Fasting, true treasure. So if you don't add fasting to your life, the treasure but marriage, marriage is a treasure, husband is a treasure, wife is a treasure, kids are a treasure, money, houses, buildings, good things, healing, redemption, they are all treasure. Peace in your body. If you don't really add fasting to your life, you'll never get anywhere. You see, Christian life is based on understanding, knowledge and wisdom. If it, it is not with you, you always perish. You always go through things you are not supposed to go through, my dear brother and sister. So we are sharing with you this morning, fasting, true treasure. And you have to do that too. What is fasting in English? Fasting means abstaining from food. But you need to abstain from food, which means a time is coming, you will not eat for 12 hours or two days. You fast and pray, you may be breaking in the evenings because Jesus fasted in Matthew for Luke for he fasted and that fasting because he, he did that fasting for the disciples. He did it for them because they asked him later on that why that your disciples don't fast. He says, why is the, the, the bridegroom is with them, they don't need to fast. They have to feast and enjoy with the bridegroom. But the day that bridegroom they, uh, may leave them, then they will be fasting and praying. So Jesus fasted for the, for the disciples. He even said that I pray for you that your faith does not fail. Yeah, so fasting is so important. We fast for our family members. We fight for our loved ones, our husband, wives, our ministries, our churches. We fight for, for, for our, 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 even our nation. We fast so that God can use the fasting to banish, disengage, and then destroy the work of the enemy. So if you pray, 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 and it's not working, you need to add fasting to whatever you have been seeking God about, my dear brother and sister. So if you have been eating too much and always eating and eating, it's good. But you can't be eating for 12 years without fasting. You can't be eating for the whole of the month without fasting. Because the fasting will give to you precious things that you cannot see with your eyes until they begin to produce kinds of results that you have been expecting in your own life. May God bless you in Jesus' mighty name. So fasting means abstaining from food. It means abstain. Uh, it means starve. It means diet. Fasting means deny oneself. Fasting means diet. It's diet. The focus is that the diet is there, mm -hmm, but mm -hmm, it's a spiritual diet. It means diet. It means starve. Uh -huh. It means denying, deny, de you deny oneself, deny oneself, means abstaining from food, abstain. You have to abstain. If you don't deny yourself to pray with fasting, to get to attitudes, the miracles will never come. Because Jesus Christ told his disciples that these things will never go until fasting and prayer. So prayer is good as well as fasting. So if you take fasting from your life as a Christian, it is not good. It is not good. God will never answer a prayer sometimes because you, you don't fast and pray. May God bless you. And we are going to go into God's word and I believe you learned something from that one in Jesus' mighty name. So fast. Begin to fast from this week or next week. I uh, mean, set a few Lord a time that you do fast at least once a month. Now church, world, redemption power ministries, God has given us a commandment that we should fast once a month. My family and I, we do with few people in the ministry. The rest, they don't fast. I don't care. Because they don't fast, I can see that their lives are the same yesterday, today, and forever. They may even make an announcement that this week we are going to fast. Only few people will fast. I don't care. I have been fasting since I was younger. And I'm still fasting. Fasting is good. And may God bless you. Jesus, much your name. Amen. Because if you don't fast, how could you see the miracle, see the marriage, and see the breakthroughs? God bless you. If you don't enforce it, the Bible says the violent take it by force. That's fasting. Not only prayer. So we are going to read Matthew 6, 16 to 21. And I believe you learned something about that sort. And whenever you are fasting, do not look gloomy like the hypocrites. For they put on a sad and dismayed face, like actors, discoloring their faces with ashes or deaths, so that their fasting may be seen by men. I assure you, and most solemnly say to you, 
they already have their reward in full. But when you fast, put oil on your head as you normally would, would to groom your hair and wash your face so that your fasting would not be noticed by people, but by your father who is what? In secret. Mm -hmm. He says, so that your fasting will not be noticed by people, but by your father who is in secret. And your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves material treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroys, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your hearts, your wishes, your desires, that on which your life centers will be also. And that says the word of the Lord this morning. May God bless you. So, so importantly, we need to understand this one. Fasting is so important. I have been watching some movies in the past. You see men, women will be in the canoes, one big ship, and they'll be going everywhere looking for the treasure island. They spend days, weeks, and months. They get to horrible, horrible uh, islands separated from humans, animal kingdom, beyond animal kingdom, horrible, horrible things, wild beasts. And the way a man, they will struggle later, they will use their mouth to trace their praise and it will be on the peak, on the apogee or mountain top somewhere or a valley or a stream somewhere and then they get it and then they will start turning back. So on the turning back, they go through attacks with bees, with horrible and animal kingdom and with kind of things that could bite their bodies and their skins and, and so now they have to starve and uh, no food, no water. They test for days and they enter into their canoes and sometimes when they enter into their canoe, they are going back. The storms, the waves will be terrible, crazy. And before then, they can, even when they are about to reach home, they begin to fight themselves and one will kill. If they are about 14, they will kill uh, four, uh, seven of them so that the seven will keep the, 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 the treasure. And now they all will kill themselves and then the treasure will be there. So if you are looking for treasure, you can't just cross your leg and sit down and pray your cold prayer and there's Expecting that God will turn to you. When the church services begins on Sundays or Wednesdays, you can't afford to stay at home going only on Sundays. The day you will not go to work is Sunday sometimes, so you go to church. So because you don't like Sunday, you were able to go to church. But Monday to Saturday, you want to work. Wednesday, they didn't even come to church. And the one that you don't like, you could come even you were late at church. So if your life is like this, and if you don't put emphasis, you don't add emphasis or enforce it, you will never see the shining. God wanted it to arise and shine for your light has come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. If you don't rise up, if you don't get to the peak, if you don't be a mountain climber, to get to the apogee to take the, the treasure, somebody may, may try to get it. Somebody may try to get it. So it is time to determine about God, about the things of the Spirit, determine that I'm going to deny myself, I'm going to starve, I'm going to abstain, I'm going to deny myself to fast. I'm going to, I'm not going to follow, focus on this diet, physical diet, but spiritual diet. So that I get substance, pressure jewels, I get amber, gold diamond, and pressure things from God through my fasting. I have fasted for years, and I could fast for a whole year, for six years, for seven years, for eight years nonstop. God knows what I've done before and I still do fast. 
periodically, little by little. Fasting is good. You can't afford to live your life like live your life like that. Only praying, eating, praying, eating. There are some things it doesn't need prayer. Fasting. There are some things. There are some some uh, stupid and 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 stubborn problems. It doesn't need prayer. It's fasting. Fasting will melt, will destroy, will depress, will abort, sabotage, subvert, damage, destroy, overcome. Fasting. Where I was facing a challenge and I just fast. Ah, the next day, I saw a change in my system or in my realm. And God will give me a dream or vision. It is gone. And I said, wow, if I knew that I should have fasted, I should have done it a long time. Wow. So fasting is the true treasure. If you don't fast, you will not get to peak. You may be 60, 65, 68, 70, and you will be aging. You will never get that promised land. You will never enter into the promised land. Even the promised land, God told Israel to eat. Later, they have to fast. On their way to Tel Aviv, they have to fast. If they don't fast, God will turn against them. So be very careful and do this. So live a godly life. Below the fasting is the true treasure is live a godly life. Live a godly life is what I'm sharing with you because fasting will help you to live a godly life. Prayer will help you to live a godly life. Reading God's word and meditating, ponder, muta, and always seeking the face of God will help you to live a godly life for your own self. Amen. So number one, don't fast like actors. People can fast to act. Like we read in the book of Matthew 6, 16 to 21. We have read it and it's, it's with you. So if you are fasting, you should not let your fasting be seen by men. Sometimes we may fast in our house, my wife and I, and the children will never know that we were fasting until the evening we were taking banana or something or fruit. And they got to know that we were fasting. So don't fast like actors. Don't fast to act. Fasting is not easy at all. It's a sacrificial thing. It's to deny yourself. You should not focus on yourself too much. Deny yourself and keep focusing on Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of our faith. Focus on him, number two. Focus on his promises for your own life. That includes marriage, engagement, uh, wedding, children, peace, joy in the Holy Ghost. Blessings of God. Precious things. So learn to fast. You may not fast this week or next week, but by all means, you will fast. Hallelujah. So number one, don't fast like actors. Number two, don't let your fasting be seen by others because you may get a reward from people because you are not fasting for people. You are not fasting for, for people to see what you are doing because they will not reward you, but it's God who will reward you even though you may fast for, for them, but they are not aware. Okay, so don't let your fasting be seen by others. Number three, your reward in fasting will come from God and not men. There's a reward in fasting. When you fast and fast and fast, uh, timely or on time, seeking the face of God continually, God comes to reward you because you have put your stomach down. You have denied self, abstain, starve, diet yourself that you are not going to eat. So do this, deny yourself and fast. I see people in our church, they don't want to pay the price, but they want God to pour the blessings like, like sugar or honey from the sky through maybe a teaspoon or tablespoon to drop it into their mouth. It cannot be all the time. My children fast. My wife fast. Myself, we fast. So that my wife could be on medication. She can stop the medication and fast and continue. And I would say, no, no, don't, don't do it. And she would say, no, I said, no, I have to fast. Your reward in fasting will, will come from God and not man. There's a reward, there's a treasure, there's a, an amber, gold, diamond, there's a present jewel that God will give to you when you focus on God through fasting and prayer. God will do it for you. So if you don't really add fasting to your life and become your lifestyle, so now I could fast for years 
and doctors will tell me I shouldn't fast again. I'll say fast. Years ago. Why? Because the Lord told me to fast. And later he came and taught me another way to fast. And I have been doing this for about 20 years now. Apart from before 20 years or maybe 15 years now. Your reward in fasting will come from God and not to me. Number four, fast with a purpose and don't follow people. When you are fasting, fast with a reason. Fast with a purpose. Fast with an expectation. The reason you are fasting because you've been praying for about two months and you haven't seen this miracle. So maybe next week you fast maybe for 12 hours. You will drink water, go to work, you will not eat. Abstain. Fasting means abstaining from food. You may drink water to fast because the fat in water is zero percent. If you are fasting, you don't cook. Coke, sugar is food. You don't take coke. You don't take any drink. You drink water. Water, the fat in water is what? Is zero percent. The fat in the water. Hallelujah. So fast with a purpose and don't follow people. Number five, learn to present yourself well in public. When you are fasting, do not be seen by people. The Bible says, put lotion, anoint yourself, your hair, as you have been doing with your hair. Do the same thing with your face and dress well. Do not let anyone see that you are fasting. Even if you go to work and uh, you used to eat with them and say, come and let's eat. You say, oh, now nah, I've eaten. No, I've eaten. I've eaten. You shouldn't say, I'm fasting. Do not let anyone know. Let anyone know, know that you are fasting. Do not let anyone. Bible says, when your left eye is rolling, you cut it. Left hand. You see, sometimes we may give. But we should not let the right hand or left hand to see that we have given. So learn to present yourself well in public. So that God may bless you. Because you are doing this secretly towards God. The kingdom of God. And God is seeing the fasting that you are fasting for him. When I used to fast when I was in secondary school, uh, God can come to the, the classroom from three or I mean from four between four and four, four and five, and I, I saw God's glory on the blackboard. Nobody saw I saw like a tongue of fire will come and be on a blackboard, it will come to, to me at the back. Because God will see that I've been fasting every week, once a week, for how many years? For about uh, five, six years before I completed. All my schools and I, Bible school, I fasted. From then I continue fasting. What's my lifetime? I'll be my lifetime. It's still my lifetime. And, and through that, God kept coming to me, seeing angels rear in my room, in my eyes, seeing God's presence. Maybe you say, maybe I'm, I'm, I am lying, but that's what God, and He's still revealing to me. The fasting delivered me and put me on divine dimensions and helakis and apogee. So learn to present yourself well in public. Number six, learn to store up treasures in heaven. Fasting will help you to store up treasures in heaven as well as on earth. On earth because you are looking for amber. You are looking for gold and diamond and precious things. You are fasting for something with a purpose. God will meet your needs anyway, but spiritually you'll be storing up treasures in heaven. Because fasting toward God will produce treasures in heaven that when you die, you are old, you go to heaven, your treasures will be in heaven. That one, no thief can break in your doors or windows to steal. They are there for you forever. So fasting produces treasures in heaven without you being aware. You are on earth. You've gotten the marriage, the children, the blessing, the monies and everything. But the higher one is in heaven. So if you don't fast, you are losing substance, you are reducing your rank in, in the spirit and in heaven, and you are not producing treasures in heaven. Fasting the true treasure. Fasting the true treasure. Fasting the true amber, the true gold, the true diamond, the true precious things. Fasting the true blessing. Learn to store up treasures in heaven. Number seven, quit storing up treasures on the earth. Because whatever you may achieve and achieve and achieve and achieve physically without fasting even on earth, when you die, somebody will enjoy it. 
But have you denied yourself through fasting and prayer? Denying yourself through fasting and prayer is to get close to God. Deny this flesh and bring it under control. Don't love it too much. Don't feed it too much. Ah, make time for the spiritual growth and be concerned about the spiritual blessings toward God. You feed and feed and feed and feed. You become too carnal, arrogant, emotional, quick temper. Because those who don't fast and pray, they are always quick temper. Small time, they are arrogant, they are proud, and, and, and they say, oh, uh, they use their way, they fool a lot. Quit stalling up treasures on the earth. That's number seven, number eight. Where your treasure is, your heart will be there. Wherever your treasure is, if your treasure is in heaven, you will be seeking God while you are on earth forever. If your treasure is on earth, you will seek God through fasting and prayer. You are working hard, getting money, and then you become useless like after many years you die. Prominent people have died on earth and they've gone somewhere and all that they achieved, somebody's enjoying now. They were not even Christians. They were not even born again. They had names in the whole of Ghana, in the whole of Africa, in the whole world. But they are no, no more. A lot also saw the face of God and they put treasure. Where they have gone, this book, you are going to see the investment they have made through fasting and prayer with holiness. And what their fasting and prayer has produced, treasures like amber, when they go to heaven, they will see amber there, gold and diamond and precious things, treasure. Where your treasure is, your heart will be there. Number nine, don't follow worldly ambitions. Don't be emotional, carnal. Don't, do not let people, me. no one can influence me, only God. I, I, I'm living in such a way that the only thing that I've allowed to influence me is God and His word, not human beings. Never, never. I will never allow anybody, anybody to influence me negatively. If I impart in my life is positive, I, I am ready for it. But if you are giving to me money or something that is a trick, is a trap, you will get me, I've gone. If you give me a place to stay, all is to pray for you, pray for you, and later maybe I may say something under the anointing and then you sack me from where I am. No way. God will show me the end from the beginning. My dear brother and sister, don't follow worldly ambitions. Don't follow crowd, masses, or people, worldly things. Follow God. And God will give you best things on earth. Lastly, number 10, live a godly life for the Lord. Live a life that is godly. Number 10, live a godly life for the Lord and your life will never be the same again. Decide to live a godly life. Decide that sin is out of your life. Decide that once a month you are going to fast at least. May the Lord empower you. May the Lord strengthen you. And I know you know where you can get your treasure island. You know where you, are, you can get your marriage, your husband from. It's not about painting your face and dressing as a woman so that people will say that you are beautiful. But what about your heart condition? What about your attitude, your behavior that you have kept somewhere after marriage, you bring it out? Work on yourself through fasting and prayer so that all these things will go. And as you see the face of God, the treasure will be uh, coming from the plate into the physical. Whilst you produce more treasures in heaven, God will also meet your need. The reason or the, the purpose of fasting will be accomplished. The husband will come. The wife will come. The kids will come. Your liberty will come. Your healing will come. Your peace will come. Your breath will come. Your visa will come. Your blessing will come. Your joy will come. The court case has been cancelled. The victory has been given to you as a believer. There is no one that can go to court and is a Christian and an unbeliever will win. Never! Because the Bible says Romans 8 to 1, if God be for the believer, who can be against him? God is always with the believer when he prays, when he fasts once a month, when even he has sinned, he has repented. God will, he always loves and cares for his own children around the world. May the Lord be with you. May the Lord empower you. And I pray that may God strengthen you and fortify you that you have an appetite as you have, you have appetite for food for Fanta and Co, for drinks, for chick, chicken and for meats, for chicken in and chicken out and whatever, for food and anything. 
you also have an appetite for spiritual things. May God touch you and increase your appetite for prayer, for fasting, for seeking, not always, but fasting once a month or when you have to fast, maybe once in two months, once in three months, once a month. May the Lord empower you to decide, to plan, to know when to fast and when not to fast. And as you do that, God will deliver you. You open more doors. You live in peace. You break through. You have blessings and prosperity toward the kingdom of God. Something did not suffer. But God gave it to you because you are a man who is holy and anointed, prayerful, and you are a man of, of fasting and prayer. You are a man who can fast and pray. And fasting means abstaining from food. It means abstain. It means diet. It means starve. It means deny oneself. May God help you that you will do what is right. Pray. I pray for grace and strength to come upon you that you will do what is right. And the Bible says, if you do what is right, who will harm you? May God strengthen you and fortify you and blow you up and give you an inheritance before many witnesses. And I pray for those who are willing to sow right now. And as you're about to sow, sow your seed to the live stream. The numbers are on the screen. Pick any one of them and sow your seed and expect a miracle to come your way this morning and this week and this month and this year in the mighty name of Jesus. As we are ending the year, we are ending the year with, a fa with fasting and prayer, with miracles, with breakthroughs, with testimony. 2021 is a good year for us. And this year has been a very good year, despite what? Because faithful is he who has called us and who also will do it. May God bless you. That's how far I could go with you. I want to hear your comments from Facebook and also from the YouTube. I go there every time and see your comments and I've been enjoying it. And may God bless you for those who have been giving good comments about our church, about the ministry, about the word, about what the Holy Ghost has been doing through us and for you. May God bless you. Have a good day. Thank you very much.